Think of all the despair, all the sadness, all the loss that the disciples of Jesus experienced in that short amount of time. They had followed this man, they had left their jobs, they put aside their families, they bought into his teachings, and on the day of his crucifixion, it was all gone, all seemingly lost and sealed in a tomb. Hopelessness dominated their minds and their hearts. And yet here we are, two millennia later, still following Jesus, many still putting everything aside, including their lives, to follow him. This event of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is the most decisive point in all of human history. All hope for humanity lies in this event. Any chance of life without end finds its place in this event. Because in this event, Jesus says to us, there is nothing that I cannot conquer. Everything will eventually find its end or its fulfillment in me. I am the resurrection and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is nothing more fundamental to the Christian message than this. And yet so often we allow other things to dominate, to take center stage in our lives. Our jobs, our families, our attempts at success, and the list could go on and on. But friends, your career was not scourged at the pillar for your salvation because it doesn't care. Your child's traveling lacrosse team didn't wear a crown of thorns and get nailed to a tree because it's not aimed at your salvation. Your bank account didn't die in a tomb and rise from the dead three days later because it doesn't care about your salvation. Your PlayStation didn't open the gates of heaven, and your college degree didn't give you life without end. It's absurd to even say these things. And yet how often we hand ourselves over and allow ourselves to be dominated by these petty things in life. How often do we give these things more attention than the Lord of life who has saved us from eternal death? This is why Easter is so absolutely essential for us, because it reorients humanity to what it really needs, to what each of us really, really needs, which is hope. Hope. This is why Mary Magdalene was at the tomb so early that morning, because after all that she had lived and seen and experienced with Jesus, she needed hope on that day. This is why Peter announces it to the crowds. Whatever you used before to give meaning to your life, let it go. Because nothing and no one can offer you the meaning that Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, can give to you. Friends, there is nothing in this world that can give meaning and purpose to our lives in the way that Jesus can. Nothing can take us beyond the limits of this world into the world to come in the way that Jesus can. Nothing. There is nothing. Nothing in this world. And so today on this great feast, when the church shouts out to all the world, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. We can hear the voice of Jesus saying to us, Rise up. Rise up. Rise up from your despair and find hope in me. Rise up from the death of addictions and regrets 
and discover joy again. Rise up from broken relationships, from poor decisions, and from your personal tomb. Rise up with me. Rise up. Say it after me. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up so that you can see above all the other useless things in this world that cannot satisfy. Rise up because you are not made for the tomb. You are not made for death. You are made for glory. Friends, there is nothing more essential, more fundamental to the Christian faith than this fact. Jesus Christ came to save us from eternal death. We may disagree on other things. We may have doubts about other areas of our faith, and it's important for us to talk about those things. But today, today we have to say that there is nothing more important than this. Jesus Christ died so that we could live. Jesus Christ rose so that we could live and so that we could live together in a community of faith where we can be uh, encouraged and formed and guided to see the full beauty of what God offers to us. Friends, how beautiful, how beautiful it is what we celebrate today. Death has no more power. Despair has no more power. Loneliness has no more power. Jesus crushes it all. Death is vanquished because Jesus is risen from the dead. I've been waiting for two days to give this homily. <laughs> and I don't know about you, friends, but I want to live. I want to live beyond this world. I want to see the beauty in everything. I want to know that my life has meaning and a, a sense of direction. I want to know that there is more that is beyond this world that leads me into something greater. This is the hope that Easter gives. In that great lyric of U2, Bono says, I would sing it, but it's, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> I want to run. I want to hide. I want to tear down the walls that hold me inside. I want to reach out and touch the flame where the streets have no name. I want to feel the sunlight on my face. I see that dust cloud disappear without a trace. I want to take shelter from the poison rain where the streets have no name. Where the streets have no name. Because it doesn't matter where we're from when we get there. It doesn't matter what divides us, what, where we grew up, because when we get there, where we are destined to go, when we get there, what matters is only that we belong to God, that we live in a city that is dominated by his presence, overwhelming uh, his glory, that we are immersed in his presence. What a beautiful, beautiful gift we have been given. We are made for this place. We are made for that glory where we are bound as one people by the Savior who calls each of us by name to leave sin behind and to rise up with him. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.